Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Plays KSP. This is episode 8 when today we will be surveying Minmus. Yes, in the previous episode, just to recap, we have created a quite a cool communications network consisting of three satellites that we have launched in a single launch. And in the today's episode, we were going to use that relay network just to make sure that we can do, you know, probes and that we can do those you know remotely so that was the point of launching the communications network so that we could remote steer a probe on its maiden voyage to minmus as always accelerating the build and i will be basing uh, the probe on the moon surveyor that has done the job so adamantly and the modifications will be extensive my guess just another tank added to the whole shenanigan and i think it will be fine but let's just quickly review that it will be not moon but minmus surveyor mark ii and in the description probe for nearly f near flyby of minmus nothing more fancy than that we just save it and uh, yes let's just review how many more tanks we will set up I'm thinking like, you know, four tanks, that should be enough to give us Delta V uh, to go uh, do a Minmus flyby. Hold on. Oops, wrong, wrong button, yes. And as always, you're watching the build in two times time acceleration because um, I think it still shows what is being shown and I will be sharing the craft anyway on the uh, on my Steam Workshop page, so just putting in some additional fins and making sure that we connect those, I think, fuel lines. I think we'll go... I'm not sure if I will go for the onion or asparagus staging. That's something to be decided yet. Let's see, fuel lines. All right, let's just find a good place to connect them. I think I might want to go for the asparagus staging this time. So yes, you connect to this guy and you are connecting to this guy, good. And then you connect to this guy and then you connect to this guy, good. So the staging, or actually the fuel lines are set, and now it's onwards to fixing the staging. So we just have to make sure that we decouple the correct sets of tanks at the correct time, and also, as you have might have noticed, the, they have the Separatron engines uh, built into them, so meaning when we stage the decoupler, we should be also staging the Separatron rockets. So just making sure that the correct pairs will be uh, firing in the right way. That one, all right, and uh, yes. All right, to me that looks fine. Yeah, time will tell if we did something, if we did mess up something royally. And without further ado, let's say, View looks good, SAS on, throttle to max, and launch it! No point in discussing if it's working or not, because we have already launched this craft uh, on, in a few episodes ago when we were surveying the moon. So that means everything is okay, so just now hoping for the correct staging sequence, and stage! Two tanks off, two tanks remaining that are feeding into the main stack meaning uh, let's switch to the apoapsis view so that we have a good view on where we're supposed to be going and as you can see I only have one swivel and two reliance and reliance are really helping in terms of power but not that we needed that much our thrust weight is 2.6 so that's quite beefy, and our epilepsy is already passing 90, which means I'm actually... Oh, 100. Yeah, well, cut the power and let it coast up to the epilepsy, and then we do the circularization. Yes. By the way, guys, do let me know in the comments below, is it possible to say 
that maneuver node will be on the apoapsis and the periapsis, you know, like from the precise maneuver node, because uh, what I'm seeing here in the 1.7, it is almost it's similar to the implementation of the precise maneuver node, but I would really like, you know, just to click one button and have my maneuver node being set up on the apoapsis, periapsis and whatnot. I don't see the button. It could be that I don't know where to look. So, yeah, please let me know in the comments below. All right, we are pointing maneuver prograde and uh, maneuver node is in 45 seconds and our burn time is one minute, six seconds. So at 32, we will be hitting the burn, which means right about now. Hit it. All right, and we have 1200 uh, meters per second to burn uh, and in our rocket we have 3.7 thousand meters per second. So that should be more than enough to be able to get to Menmus, hopefully get some science, do a, some sort of a flyby and then return back because this probe isn't designed to be sending the data, it's designed to retrieve the data and come back to Kerbin because, well, you get more science by doing so and why not? All right, I think we have circularized 109 by 100. I'm pretty happy with that orbit. So now a little bit of maneuver node fiddling until we get our inclination correct towards Minmus. So it's going here. So we can go on the ascending node and make sure that we have correctly, that we will be burning normally at this point. Okay, just make sure that we normal retrograde, I guess. 4.7, 2.8, come on, 2.1. 0, 0 0.0, see? That's the way you want to do it. All right, now it's all a matter of pointing the right rocket in the right direction and lighting up the matchstick. Who would be saying that the rocket science is actually so easy, right? accelerating a little bit and we are coming into maneuver node and hit it beautiful view perfect four meters per second let's just yeah 1.2 a little bit you know more thrust yeah 0 0.2 that's close enough for my taste all right time to set up our transfer So let's just quickly check where about is Minmus. No, that's Moon. Minmus, here you are. All right. So with that thing in mind, that means I should be planning maneuver somewhere about there ish, kind of, hopefully. And look, we already have a near pass and like that we might have an encounter. Looks about right, and let's just see where... Huh, interesting, it doesn't have a return trajectory. Does that mean it will just be doing the litho breaking on Minmus? Hopefully not. Oh no, I stand corrected. There's a return trajectory. Periapsis is 206. Let's try and bring down the periapsis as much as we can. Yeah, that looks about right, 11,000 meters, because then it will put us, in the, put us in the crazy trajectory on the free return, but we have enough uh, delta V to be correcting that anyway. So, overall, I'm pretty happy with the, with the way it looks. And, of course, I had to screw it up by fiddling a bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to get back to you the moment I fix the approach. All right, anyway, I have an X, I have a pass at around 56,000. I should have stick with uh, 11, 
but that's close enough and I'll just fix my trajectory midway. I think that's the easier solution. With Minmus they are not really big. If I was going to Duna or some further planets then I would want to fix my trajectory you know regardless as early as possible but with Minmus I mean we have more than enough Delta V to perform any sort of corrections that might be ne necessary later on. So Hitting it. There we go, 23 meters per second to correct. And right, 0 0.1, close enough. Is there a periapsis? I don't think so. Well, let's extend the antenna to make sure that it can communicate. It has solar powers, powers solar panels, so it will have power. And uh, the only thing to be re remaining is to fix the approach. So I'm planning on doing exactly that. Oh, and uh, I did press a little bit of a burn. Oh, uh, and we had only 66 second meters per second, so it's better to stage it and see what our approach would be without the actual... Uh, yeah. All right, so let's... We have an ascending node here. Let's do a maneuver to make sure that we secure ourselves a decent approach. You know, corrections once you're underway. And as you can see, they're pretty tiny corrections. Like 12 meters per second, that's literally nothing. However, I want to ensure that my periapsis is not too big, but not too small either. I would be aiming for around 11. That was perfect, I think. I have no idea why I actually press that on minimus periapsis come on give me something good 140 nope nope i think i'll switch the patch conics uh, to something more doable anyway 13.3 meters per second that would put us into a decent orbit or decent flyby by Minmus and I'm gonna thrust, limit my thrust so that I have more time I can execute it more precise that way that's also guys a tip if your burn is only taking like 0. Point something seconds it's a good practice to reduce the thrust on your craft so that you could more fine-tune it I mean there's no way in hell that I could burn for 0. 0.7 seconds I'm not that precise Even a five second burn is tricky for me. We are approaching Minmus and on Minmus we should be entering its sphere of influence sooner rather than later. And there we go. So now we can tweak our approach if necessary. It will make our approach certainly look, you know, more panache. And our periapsis there is also skewered anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We can tweak it. Let's add the maneuver node, and I want to be passing close. Meaning that I should be pressing something like that, something like that. Oh, that's too close. 7000, that's still too close. Eight. I would go for 11 if possible, please. 11. Perfect. No more touching. Good. Leave it be. And a nice screeny as we are approaching Minmus. You know, make it look good. But uh, while we're high up, we have some experiments to do. Mystery goo observation. Pressure data, we are after all in the Minmus sphere of influence and we can use all the science that we can get. 
So, yes. Contain all the experiments. You know, collect all. Thank you. And we have a total of 26.4 uh, meters per second burn. That's supposed to be happening in a second or two. Mark. Hitting the burn, see? That should hopefully make sure that we have much nicely, much more nicely aligned approach. Zero seven, zero six. Yeah, see, already looking much better. Why cannot I delete the maneuver node? Interesting. Oh, now I can. All right. The curb and periapsis I will be fixing after the approach. Let's now enjoy in the approach to Minmus. And of course I had to take a screenshot. Now let's enjoy watching as the Minmus draws ever closer. Green and minty. Okay. Just trying to find the best angle to take that screenshot. All right, closing in and we will be passing rather close, but I'm worried about my connectivity. If my connection is going to sever the moment we go into the planet's shadow. I don't know how it's implemented with the comnet. Do you have the abilities to fly or only to control the ship or perform experiments? We will investigate right about now. Log pressure data, we are still high. So I'm going to actually bookmark all the experiments so that I can do them in quick succession. Barometer, containment unit, thermometer, science junior, and... Did I put in the mystery goo? I don't believe I did. We are still high over, so... I think we will need to go into the shadow to be able to. And I mean, connectivity is still up. So I know that for a fact that if I use remote tech, it will just, you know, kill the control and you can do jack. So high over still. Yeah, we are 45 kilometers up. That's higher than I would expect. Still, we're high up. And I'm expecting, and now we're in shadow, but we can still perform experiments. Woohoo! Oh, that is much better. That means that, uh, so it's not at all like remote tech. I mean, it, got, it does make sense. You could have intelligence, you know, done in the probe, say when altitude something, then do the record the experiments. Probes are after all not that dumb, so. Maybe, maybe that would be a worthy approach. All right, uh, so collect all the data. Ah, now we couldn't be collecting the data. Okay, fair enough. Let's get out of the shadow then. And the connection has been reacquired. Let's see if we can then add the maneuver node to get our approach better. So, that being said, let's point Maneuver prograde, 72 meters per second. We have 1,433, so we have more than enough. All right, and our maneuver node is in 35 seconds. Let's do the burn. It takes 45 seconds because I have stupidly enough forgot to up my thrust. But at least we'll be able to fine tune it now, won't we? Look on the positives. Yes, always. 20 meters per second to, to burn. 
Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. All right, that resolves it pretty much. Getting out of the sphere of influence and let's now check what's our curb in periapsis. It's 62 kilometers, the periapsis. All right. Let's just burn until we bring the periapsis to uh, 25 ish. 25. There we go. Look. Perfect. And let's thrust limit. Let's see if we can do some more experiments. That would definitely be handy. Alright, and I think we can kick the time acceleration to enjoy as Kerbin draws ever closer and closer for our return. There we go. Beautiful view in surveying Minmus. All right, and we are 350 kilometers above Kerbin. We are getting ready for our re-entry, meaning I want to orient myself orbit retrograde change the angle which I'm viewing things because this makes things a little bit nicer. You can see the curvature of Kerbin and our orbital speed is picking up. Significantly, if I might, might add. Now we're coming down to this and I think I'm gonna retract the communitron. I don't want it to break. And speaking of breaking, let's hit the brakes. Oh, dang it, I forgot to close down the materials bay. Now I'm looking at post-processing. One of my viewers actually suggested close down the materials bay. Well, guys, I think once again we will have cooked experiments. Good thing I backed up, backed up everything in the other section. So, yeah, well, doesn't matter. We have slowed down to a degree and now we hit the stage where the heat shield takes over and the material bay cooks properly. So one bay with the cook experiments coming up. Twenty two kilometers above the surface. I thought for a while we would be heading for that continent, but we will be doing probably a splashdown near its shores, which is good enough. I mean, any landing that you can walk away from, or in this case recover, because this is a probe, it cannot walk away from, otherwise it would be just weird. Uh, so 10 kilometers going down. I will be popping the chute once we get closer because the chute holds it in midair, meaning, yeah, it's better to. See, ground forks, now you're just talking to yourself. My friend Max used to say yeah, it comes with age. I think I'm starting to think he's right. All right, surface 100 meters per second and the chute should be popping about now. Yes, around 8.50 and good. Time warping. We have 700 meters to go on the chutes. Let's jettison the heat shield. I mean, not that I need to jettison it. It's just, I don't know. I just like jettisoning it. And guys, as always, once we land and retrieve the vessel, I will be wrapping up for this episode. As always, you know what to do, right? Like if you like, leave the comments on what adventures you would like to me to do, what do you think could be done, uh, you have any handy tips, as always, basically, yeah. 
Let me know how you like the series and um, as always, I will be seeing you in the next episode. As you can see, 337 science to spend, which we'll be doing in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Gromforx, signing off.